I got to tell you, I'm pretty pissed off. Yeah, I'm angry about the top secret documents lying around Mar-a-Lago. I'm concerned about what the former president did with them and why he didn't give them back. But I'm more pissed at Elise Stefanik's defense of serious crimes and her attacks on law enforcement. This isn't a game. I spent nearly 15 years at the CIA, and I and countless of my intelligence and military colleagues put ourselves in harm's way to protect our national security. People died to collect those secrets. Stefanik knows that. She sits on the House Intel Committee and knows the tremendous harm that's been done to our national security. That's Matt Castelli making being pissed off great again, blasting the number three Republican leader in the House, Congresswoman Elise Stefanik, for her defense of Donald Trump and the government documents found at his Florida property. Stefanik, the once quasi-normal lawmaker turned extreme MAGA cult follower, called the legally justified search, quote, Russia hoax 2.0, and actually suggested to Axios that the nation's federal law enforcement agencies, all of them, are corrupt. Matt Costelli is a former CIA officer, a first-time congressional nominee, hoping to unseat Elise Stefanik in their upstate New York midterm race. He joins us now. Um, I, I want to see if I have more. I mean, your your video last night, you know, kind of had a, had a moment. Um, talk about your message there. Thank you, Nicole. It's great to be with you again. Well, I'm still pissed off because from the very start of all of this, we saw Stefanik defending this serious breach of our national security. She's launched these unhinged attacks against law enforcement. And as you noted this week, she started to call this a hoax. It's not a game. There are 139 stars on the wall at CIA headquarters for those officers who lost their lives while collecting and protecting our nation's secrets. And so I, I want Elise Stefanik to look their family members in the eyes and tell them that their sacrifice was in vain. Tell them that this threat to our national security is all a hoax. It's not just CIA officers either. It's men and women in uniform, thousands of them who lost their lives participating in intelligence missions. I want her to look those family members in the eyes and tell them that this threat to our national security is a hoax. One of the reasons, and I highlighted this in the video, that I'm so pissed off and upset is that Stefanik does know better because she sits on the House Intel Committee. She does know how grave a threat that has occurred here to our national security. And it's just very readily apparent that she's willing to sell out her country, willing to sell out our national security, presumably to continue having million dollar fundraisers down at Mar-a-Lago or these pipe dreams of becoming vice president in 2024. Elise Stefanik, in my estimation, is a traitor. Wow. Um... That is farther than you've gone in your campaign. Since you were on last time, I, I dug around a little bit on, on your race. And it, it is true that Elise Stefanik has not faced voters in the district as this version of herself. And to your point, this is very much, um, uh, uh, I mean, who knows which one is real, but this is a manufactured presentation of her national political ambitions. And I wonder if you can take me inside how that's how she's faring in, in a district that did not send this MAGA caricature to Congress to represent it. Well, people are pretty mobilized and unified in support of our campaign to unseat her. Certainly Democrats are, but independents and Republicans as well, because she has changed on the electorate. She has embraced this far right extreme version and taking her party down this very, very dark path. This is a moderate district. And so this race is really turning into, I believe, the front line in the battle for the soul of our nation. Because there is no person on the ballot this November who is more responsible for this ongoing threat to our democracy than Elise Stefanik. There's no person that's more responsible for the rock that we're seeing right now in the Republican Party than Elise Stefanik. She's hijacked my mother's Republican Party. We all saw her stab Liz Cheney in the back. She's working overtime to prevent there from being any kind of accountability for the insurrection. And right now we're seeing her refuse to stand up for the rule of law. All of this to advance her own career. And I think it's clear to many voters, certainly all of those uh, supporting our campaign, that she's a sellout and she's the worst form of politician. And we're going to defeat her this November. Um Matt, I, I dug into her margin of victory last time, specifically this. She won re-election by 18 points, and she ran nine points ahead of Trump. 
So what was explained to me was those nine points were not more Republicans. They were the voters you're talking about. That represented independence that remembered her as something different than what she has become since she replaced Liz Cheney in leadership because Liz Cheney had the audacity to tell the truth about Trump's role in inciting a deadly insurrection. Do, do, you, do you have her running behind her numbers in 2020? We do, because after redistricting here in New York, we picked up a number of territory. Uh, as folks know, last week was a big week for the Democratic win in New York 19. Some of those uh, counties that are a part of, were a part of that special election are actually now going to be a part of New York 21. And we're building a coalition in a way that prior candidates hadn't been able to of those democracy-loving Republicans, of those independents who make up 30 percent of registered voters in our district. And we're hearing from so many of those Republicans who are just disgusted with Stefanik's you know, unpatriotic attacks against law enforcement and this assault against the rule of law. One of the unique things that we've been able to do in this race is that I'm not just running as a Democratic candidate. I'm running as the moderate party candidate as well. Here in New York, through fusion voting, if you collect enough signatures, you can carry multiple party lines. And so in November, we have a wonderful vehicle for all of those independents and Republicans who may not be able to bring themselves to vote for a Democrat, well, they can vote for Matt Castelli on the moderate party line because this yeah. is a moderate district. She used to be, as you noted, a moderate. When folks voted for her initially, they thought they were getting a moderate. They had previously voted for moderates, Democrat moderates, Barack Obama, Bill Owens, whomever it may be. For a shift that mm -hmm. has occurred since the 2020 election is really out of step with the electorate.